Hello everyone! In this video, we'll be solving three calculus problems. This video is in response to Michael Penn's video, which was published three, four days ago. When I saw this video, I thought to myself, I have some ideas that I'd like to share regarding these kinds of problems, and here we go. So, let's go ahead and tackle each one of these problems. I'll be using different techniques and strategies, and let's get started. Okay, so the first problem is y equals 2x plus 1 divided by x plus 3. This is a rational function. As you know, we're going to differentiate this function with respect to x. Okay, so this is what I'd like to do. And by I just want to say uh, that I'm not claiming that these methods are any in any way better or shorter, but I, these are just different. And they're not necessarily better or shorter. So I just wanted to say that as a disclaimer. Okay, cool. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'll, I'd like to ln both sides. Why would I do that? You'll see in a little bit. If you ln both sides, obviously, you do have a quotient. As you know, if you ln a quotient, that's going to turn into a difference of ln's, right? So we can write this as basically ln of 2x plus 1 minus ln of x plus 3. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to differentiate this. But of course, this became like an implicit function now. So we're going to do implicit differentiation. But as you know, y is a function of x. So what is the derivative of ln y? It's y prime over y, right? So I can just go ahead and write it as y prime over y. y prime means the derivative of y. And that is equal to the right-hand side differentiated. So how do you differentiate the ln function again? You differentiate the inside and divide it by the function itself by using the chain rule. So the derivative of 2x plus 1 is definitely 2 and divided by 2x plus 1. And then minus, as you know, plus minus, we can differentiate separately. x plus 3, the derivative of x plus 3 is 1, divided by itself x plus 3. So we're pretty much done. All, the only thing we have to do here is multiply both sides by y, which is 2x plus 1 divided by x plus 3, as you know, right? So I'm going to go ahead and write that first here. And then that'll be multiplied by the whole quantity, 2 over 2x plus 1 minus 1 over x plus 3, and we're basically done. Obviously, you can make a common denominator, you can simplify this a little bit more, so on and so forth, but you get the idea. By using the natural logarithm, we can actually differentiate these kinds of things. And obviously, if we had a more complicated expression, we could use this method as well. Okay, great. So let's go on to the second problem now. So in the second problem, what I'd like to do is... Here we go. And this problem comes up a lot, right? Uh, the derivative, I mean, the integral of e to the power x sine x. And a lot of times people use uh, integration by parts. Obviously, that makes sense. But if you apply it once, you know, it's not going to work. You have to do it again. And then you get the same integral with different coefficients, so on and so forth. So you kind of like solving an integral without solving it, which is kind of cool. I think it's lots of fun. So we're going to use a different strategy here. And what is that strategy? That strategy involves, instead of integrating this function, I'm going to differentiate it. And you might be asking, like, why are we doing this? You'll see in a little bit, so stay tuned. Okay, so I have e to the power x sine x. I'd like to differentiate it. And when you differentiate a product, as you know from the product rule, if you have u times v, when you, you differentiate it, it is going to be, what is that going to be? The derivative of u times v plus the derivative of v times u. Okay, great. So what I'd like to do first, then, is differentiate the e to the power x the derivative of e to the power x is e to the power x, multiply by the sine x itself, which is sine x, plus the derivative of sine x is cosine x, which I can write, multiply by the e to the power x. So I can also go ahead and write it as e to the power x cosine of x. So basically, when I differentiate the product, I get this type of sum. You can take out e to the power x. We'll do that later. No big deal. Now, we're going to be differentiating e to the power cosine x. Why? Because it came up in our expression. So I'd like to differentiate that. And you'll see some amazing things when I differentiate this function. So we're going to be using the same strategy. And I can also say that if you are differentiating something like e to the power x times f of x, as a general rule, I can safely say that, well, this is always equal to the e to the power x multiplied by the quantity f of x plus the f prime of x. So it's basically, you're adding the function to its derivative, multiply by e to the power x, that gives you the derivative of the product as a shortcut. Okay, great. So this is going to look like then the derivative of e to the power of x multiplied by cosine x. But now the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, so I have to put a minus sign here, which is kind of interesting, right? And we're going to be getting sine x. Now, remember, our goal is to 
integrate e to the power x sine x, and that's going to come from the right-hand side. Why? Because something differentiated equals this. If we integrate both sides, then we're going to get rid of the derivative and we'll find the solution. So what I'd like to do next is basically I'd like to go ahead and subtract these two equations side by side. And when I do subtract this way, obviously e to the power x cosine x is going to cancel out and I'm going to end up with this difference, but that's the difference of derivatives. So can I just go ahead and write it as e to the power sine x minus e to the power x cosine x differentiated? Because as you know, the difference or sum or, or sum can just easily be differentiated like that. And this is going to equal the e to the power x sine x, but just two times because we're subtracting the opposite of that from itself. Great. Now, since I'm trying to find e to the power x sine x, let me go ahead and isolate that on the left-hand side. And I'd like to divide both sides by 2. So that's going to bring a 1 half here. So our expression is actually equal to, and then what I can do here is I can basically take out e to the power x. That's going to give me sine x minus cosine x, right? But of course, this is the derivative of that. So I'm going to go ahead and write it as, of course, I can keep the 1 half outside. It's just a constant. As you know, we have a constant rule. So this is basically what we get. Now, here is going to be my next step, which is super important, of course, because we're trying to integrate what? e to the power x sine x. So if I go ahead and integrate both sides, I'm going to be getting the answer. So the answer is going to be like this this expression. And you might be wondering how you integrate this one, right? Well, first of all, you got to remember that this is basically the integral of one half multiplied by this expression. Now, how can you express something like u prime? Well, u prime is equal to du over dx, right? So basically, instead of u prime, you can just write this as this times uh, d over dx. So you can basically write it as d of this, right? e to the power x times sine x minus cosine x over dx. But then, of course, you're going to have a dx inside, and then the dx is going to cancel out, so you're going to have du. What is the integral of du? It's just u. With the coefficient in the front, basically, then our answer is going to be like this. We're going to pull the 1 half outside. The integral of d of this is just going to be itself, so we can basically write it as 1 half times the quantity e to the power x multiplied by sine x minus cosine x. And of course, at the end, don't forget to add the constants because you're going you're gonna to lose points if you don't, right? Okay, great. So that's going to be the integral of e to the power x sine x by using differentiation on two functions, which is e to the power sine x and e to the power x cosine x. So we kind of didn't use the integration by parts, but we did use the integration by parts. Great. So here we go. This is our third and last problem. Okay. This is, again, a rational function, but we have a product at the bottom. And this is an idea that's used a lot with infinite sums or sequences in series. So here is the strategy. When you have two factors, when you have two factors that differ by one, and we have a one in the numerator, so that's awesome. Here's what we can do. Here's the trick. And it's very simple, but it's super powerful. Instead of 1, I can just write x minus the quantity x minus 1, can't I? Because they, they differ by 1, that's why I can use this method, right? If they didn't differ by 1, they differ by 2, you can easily adjust the coefficients because you know that we can always multiply and divide by the same number in an integral and derivative, so that's fairly easy to do. Now, what I'd like to do next is separate this, and as you separate them, you're going to notice that in the first part, the x is going to cancel out, so this is going to give you 1 over x minus 1, minus 1 over x. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to integrate this, right? So let's go ahead and integrate this expression with the dx. And it's easy because it's just going to be two separate integrals. So I can just go ahead and separate them and integrate like that. So let's go ahead and do it. What is the integral of 1 over x minus 1? Well, it's pretty much like 1 over x, which is ln, but with a little co uh, constant in it, which doesn't really matter. It's just going to be the ln of the absolute value of x minus 1 minus, this is going to be the ln of the absolute value of x. Of course, don't forget the c, and you'll be done. Of course, you can put it together if you want. You write it as a quotient, so on and so forth, but that's pretty much it. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.